So back in 1908, there was a, a British cavalry officer by the name of Lieutenant General Robert Baden-Powell who had an idea. Uh, actually, the idea was born sometime before that during uh, his service during the Second Boer War in South Africa, where he wrote in 1899 uh, a very non-conventional field manual for British soldiers called Aids to Scouting, which was filled with inspiring stories, uh, general scouting methods, and, and even games meant to encourage the development of light reconnaissance skills within the British Army. As a piece of trivia, during his military campaigns in South Africa, Powell had to uh, get a little creative at a time when his troops were seriously outnumbered. At one point, calling on the help of 12- to 15-year-old boys, a part of a volunteer group of young men in training known as the, the Math King Cadet Corps. These were cadets dressed in their khaki uniforms and wide-brimmed hats and were deployed to support troops by... Uh, serving as couriers, delivering messages or supplies, or even uh, helping as hospital hands. This would free the, the actual soldiers to focus on the combat. Powell's scouting book was produced out of his experiences working with the boys of the Math King Cadet Corps. The book became a popular field manual, not, not only for the British Army, but, but it soon caught the attention of young boys in general throughout Britain. In response to this, Powell wrote a non-military edition with added lessons on, on good morals and citizenship. Uh, in addition to those common scouting skills the, the military cadets had learned, uh, to test out his new field curriculum on July 25th, 1907, um, he and a, a few other instructors took a group of 22 boys on a camping expedition to Brownsey Island in Dorsetshire off the coast of England. Uh, th there they spent a fortnight, th 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 that is two weeks, teaching the boys about camping, uh, observation, deduction, woodcraft, boating, life-saving, uh, patriotism, and, and chivalry. Uh, but by all accounts, this was the first Boy Scout meeting uh, ever to be held. The following year, in January 1908, uh, Powell's new field guide was published under the name Scouting for Boys. And, and troops began springing up all across the British Commonwealth. A central Boy Scout office was set up to register all the new scouts, to, to organize its leadership, to you know, design a uniform, and so forth. By, by the end of the same year, there were 60,000 eager Boy Scouts ready for adventure, which each troop soon undertook with its own expeditions. In 1909, the first National Boy Scout meeting was held in London, which 10,000 scouts attended, including a group of uniformed girls who called themselves the Girl Scouts. Apparently, they wanted to be a part of the action, too, uh, and for reasons we'll come back to, uh, Powell decided to keep the new organization uh, exclusive to boys, though he, he also agreed to launch a separate program dedicated to the girls, which received the name The Girl Guides. So, dating back to its original founding, that there has been some shared interest in scouting between both boys and girls, as, as well as some discussion uh, on whether to combine or to keep separate the two groups. Again, I want to come back to this in a minute. Around the same time, an American version of the Boy Scouts came to be when uh, a Chicago publisher by the name of William Boyce was one time uh, lost in the fog and helped by an unknown scout uh, who managed to help him get through it. Uh, Boyce was so inspired by the experience, he launched several outdoor youth organizations which developed into the Boy Scouts of America, or the BSA. Uh, popularity of, of the movement spread in America just as it had in Britain, including among the girls. So in, in 1912, the, the Girl Scouts of America was also established. There are so many principles we could point to that, that makes scouting scouting, especially as it was first presented by Mr. Baden-Powell. Uh, and there's a, certainly a lot of good stuff to think about. But, but one aspect in particular I think is worth mentioning, uh, especially for our modern times, is the emphasis the program was originally designed to give to the training of boys in their transition to becoming men. Uh, for example, in the preface to the first edition of the Boy Scouts of America Handbook in 1911, the editorial board explains, quote, The Boy Scouts of America is a corporation formed by a group of men who are anxious that the boys of America should come under the influence of the movement and be built up in all that goes to make character and good citizenship. 
in these pages and throughout our organization, we have made it obligatory upon our scouts that they should cultivate courage, loyalty, patriotism, brotherliness, self-control, courtesy, kindness to animals, usefulness, cheerfulness, cleanliness, thrift, purity, and honor. No one can doubt that with such training added to his native gifts, the American boy will in the near future as a man be an efficient leader in the paths of civilization and peace. We send out our official handbook, therefore, with the earnest wish that many boys may find in it new methods for the proper use of their leisure time and fresh inspiration in their efforts to make their hours of recreation contribute to strong, noble manhood in the days to come. Or as as it's explained in Baden-Powell's original manual, Scouting for Boys, he says, The object of its institution is to complete the sequence of the training from boyhood to manhood through the progressive grades of wolf, cub, scout, and rover, which, which apparently were the original scouting ranks at the time. Well, no wonder the decision was originally made to keep the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts as separate organizations. Foundationally, the Boy Scouts were were built with the objective of training boys to be men. Uh, that, that obviously looks different than the objective of training girls to be women. At least it, it used to be obvious. H- how did the manual say it? No one can doubt that with such gifts, the American boy will in the near future as a man be an efficient leader. Unfortunately, though, that kind of uh, leadership training and gifting traditionally associated with manhood wants something, quote, no one can doubt, end quote. Things have changed over the last hundred years. Uh, Today, there seems to be some confusion as to the basic definition and distinction between manhood and womanhood. The biblical complementarian belief that that men and women are created equal in value and worth before God, uh, but created differently by design in their roles and responsibilities, has sadly been lost in the larger culture. Uh, A modern feminist egalitarian uniformity, uh, insisting on the virtual equality of men and women, including in their roles and responsibilities, has now become mainstream. Um, Some even Believe gender itself is a social construct that has no place in public discourse uh, other than the biological blue and pink differences between boys and girls, which which they say themselves should be open to transitioning from one to the other if it's so desired. Um, All of us are just a colorful, non-binary spectrum of people. We, we, We are what we want to be. In, in my opinion, it's, it's all the result of an increasingly secular society that no longer answers to God or the authority of Scripture to tell us what we are or what we should be. Unfortunately, the, the Boy Scouts program itself has since abandoned its foundational understanding of the important differences between men and women, uh, d- despite their continued promise to honorably fulfill their duty before God, as they state in their Scout Oath. Um, In in a 2017 statement by Chief Scout Executive Mike Serba, uh, it it seems the organization's real loyalty now is to the shifting opinion of a very confused society. He says, quote, We and others have recently been challenged by a very complex topic on the issue of gender identity. For more than 100 years, the Boy Scouts of America ultimately deferred to the information on an individual's birth certificate to determine eligibility for and participation in the program. After weeks of conversation, we realize that referring to birth certificates as the reference point is no longer sufficient. Starting today, he says, this was back in 2017, we will accept the registration in our scouting programs based on the gender identity provided on an individual's application. In other words, it doesn't matter how God made you or his intended design for the biological sexes. If you want to tag along with the guys... Uh, the door's open to you. If you want to state on the application you are a guy, even if you're a girl, no no big deal. Distinguishing between manhood and womanhood is no longer important to us, is is basically what I hear him saying. Well, folks, regardless of the direction the BSA and and the broader culture has gone, um, acknowledging the God-given differences between men and women is still important. Why? Well, because God's good plan for the sexes hasn't changed. 
What is God's good design for the sexes? Well, we're, we're told a big part of God's plan for the sexes is to reflect aspects of his nature and character. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I take that to, to mean there are certain attributes hardwired into a man that makes him a man. And certain attributes hardwired into a woman that makes her a woman. That when taken complementarily, makes them both in God's image. I won't take time to go through all those different qualities, but, but biblically, they are there. And biblically, they haven't changed. How do we know that? Well, because the nature of God hasn't changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can assume those things made in his image should remain the same as well. Another part of God's plan for the sexes, uh, par particularly in the context of marriage, is to reflect not only aspects of God's nature and character, but of the complementing nature of the gospel itself. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. Before that, the text speaks of uh, a man and woman's different but complementary roles in the home, uh, a, a man's primary leadership in the home, and a wife's instrumental support of her husband creates uh, a kind of living portrait of how God graciously leads the church and how the church uh, joyously thrives as an integral part of God's work in the world. Obviously, the, the home is where biblical masculinity and biblical femininity are meant to shine brightest. But certainly it can still be reflected in public life too, uh, whether that's in the church or, or at the sports arena or, or even on the scouting trail. The Boy Scouts of America may have lost its way in the, the search of what it means to be a man, but, but that doesn't mean everyone on the trail has. In fact, if you're looking for a Christian scouting organization that holds to a complementarian view— and which came about as, as a result of the BSAs wrongly calibrating their compass on such matters, I can point you to a somewhat recent scouting organization that, that has come about um, with a founding on biblical principles. According to its website, Trail Life USA is a church-based, Christ-centered, boy-focused mentoring and discipleship journey that speaks to the heart of a boy. Uh, established on timeless values derived from the Bible and set in the context of outdoor adventure, boys from kindergarten through 12th grade are engaged in a troop setting by male mentors where they are challenged to grow in character, understand their purpose, serve their community, and develop practical leadership skills to carry out the mission for which they were created. I'll tell you, I've got two of my own boys in a local trail life troop here in Arkansas. Actually, uh, three of my boys are currently participating. One, uh, due to his special needs, is participating in more of an, an honorary capacity right now, though I was excited to learn trail life does have a special track just for special needs students. I'll probably be looking into that eventually. Soon, though, I'll have my fourth son enrolled uh, as well when he turns five. Uh, and, and as one of the dads, I'm also actively involved, so it's turned into something for all the guys in our family. I like what I read in an article at Backpacker.com reporting on Trail Life's inception a few years ago. Uh, one member of the organization was quoted saying, quote, The Boy Scouts may own the trademark of scouting, but they don't own the idea. The article goes on, Here, trailmen replace Boy Scouts. Instead of a second grader earning the wolf badge, he's a hawk in trail life. The oaths have strong overlap, as do many of the skills, including a focus on survival, first aid, and being a good citizen. At our core, though, Trail Life CEO Mark Hancock explains, we are unapologetically Christian. It is absolutely in our foundation, irretrievable, irreplaceable, irremovable, end quote. So far, I have been 
uh, more than impressed with the teaching and instruction we've received in Trail Life. Uh, n- not only are the outdoor skills and, and, and the fraternal relationships something I think uh, helps foster manliness, but, but the focus on character building and biblical truth is something that fosters godliness. That, that happens to be one of the core distinctives of trail life. The, the program is, quote, focused on turning boys into godly men. Our firm conviction, the organization says, is that this can only be done by allowing a boy the opportunity to interact, work with, and be mentored by and with other Christian men. Well, I could say a lot more about Trail Life USA and and, and scouting in general. Uh, Suffice it to say, I believe a crucial part of the entire pursuit is a discovery of the person God wants you to be. For boys, I believe that must necessarily include their becoming God-honoring men, which is why we're a part of the program we're a part of. To learn more about that program, I'd I'd point you to traillifeusa.com, where you'll find more information on their distinctives and values, as well as their uh, their various advancement tracks for the boys. Uh, You you can also find a directory on their website of the different troops and, and what local options exist and are close to you. Well, I hope this episode has been helpful. Um, Encourage you to stay tuned for more episodes to come. Until then, God bless.